Yo, what's going on, Kicks Army? Today I'm going to be doing a sneaker drawing on the upcoming Kobe AD sale, Exodus? I don't even know. As well as talking about my opinion on the VAR ball and the big ball of brand. Let's go! Now, even though the official name of the model of the sneaker has been unreleased, I'm going to go ahead and add the sneaker to the website anyway, and whenever we find out the official name for it, I'll make sure I change it on the website as well. And as for the official name for the colorway, I've seen three different ones. I've seen Sale, I've seen the Lakers colorway, and then I've seen Exodus. So whenever I hear word of the official name for this colorway released, I'll make sure to change it in the title as well, but you've guys seen the images so you know what sneaker I'm doing. Now as far as I know, the only information that we really have on this sneaker as well as this model in general is that it's going to release this August 24th, which is known as Kobe Day. And in case anybody is confused on that, Kobe wore two separate numbers over the course of his career. He wore the numbers 8 and 24, so August 24th is 824. Mind blown, trust me, I know. And as far as I can see, there hasn't been any pricing confirmed, but I imagine it's going to be around the 150-ish price range. Although it wouldn't surprise me one bit if it was a little bit lower than that. And personally, I do like the colorway. I do like the model of the shoe. Although, again, I say this with every video. I have no intentions of copying this sneaker or any pair of sneakers for the time being. I am focused on school and that's pretty much it. Somebody's got to pay this tuition and it's going to be me. But if you like this sneaker, if you think it's dope, it's going to be releasing in a week. So keep a lookout for that. And when it comes to Kobe sneakers, the only real model that I can say that I actually like a lot was the Kobe 8. I think the overall model look of the Kobe 8 had the perfect amount of simplicity and they just had so many good colorways with it too. Like whenever I get to the point where I'm actually going to start building up my collection again, I start investing money back into sneakers. One of the pairs of the Kobe 8s is definitely going to be included in my collection as like a general beater shoe. But I'm curious, let me know what you guys think about this colorway as well as the official model itself. Do you guys think it's cool? Do you guys think it's not too interesting? Let me know. And to point something out about the drawing real quick, you're going to notice towards the toe of the shoe where I have that purple, and especially on that purple strip on the outsole, I experiment with two different kinds of purples, although one of the purples is more of like a fuchsia. I was kind of working with it. I saw that the fuchsia color was a little bit too off to what the original model looked like, so I ended up just sticking with the one purple all the way through, just kind of blending out that single color so that way it has that depth. And it's funny too because in the past like when I first started the channel if I were to do a little mess up like that where I'm like I'm trying something out and it doesn't really work too well I definitely would have scrapped the video and either started over or just kind of gave up on that video altogether. But I personally don't mind having these little bits of quote unquote mess ups here and there because as I preached before it's not about perfection it's about execution. Like I'm not going to throw out the whole video just because in two small spots it added a little bit of extra color than it needed. You live and you learn and that's what it's really all about right? Now before before I get into some big baller news, make sure that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and bounce past that bell to get post notifications. If you're into sneakers, art, and basketball, then this channel might be something that you'd like. Or maybe it won't, it's gotta be one of the two, right? <laughs> now over the past day, LeVar Ball and the JBA have been in the news lately and it's not necessarily for anything good. There have been reports recently of a player known as Brandon Phillips who was actually cut midway through the season for LiAngelo Ball, saying that the JBA hasn't paid him his full contract amount. As a matter of fact, he said that he only received one third of his contract payment amount and that he has had to pay for his bags going on different flights as well as he has screenshots of other players on the teams who also haven't been paid the full amount. Now if I may, let's just take the hypothetical highway for a quick moment. Let's say that it is true that these players haven't received their full payment just yet and that they'll get paid soon like within the month or whatever. This is still not a good look at all. Like this kid Brandon Phillips gave up his college eligibility just so he could make supposedly so far this $1,000 as opposed to the three grand that he was signed for. Like that's so messed up. I don't understand how you would even allow something like this to happen. Like even if you have to take it at a loss, which clearly this whole thing will be taken at a loss, you can't go ahead and cut payments out of the players that you signed a contract with. You can write it off as a loss in terms of sales or anything else, but you can't not pay these players because they will go out to the public and make note of this. And now a number of different social media blogs and websites have picked up this story and this thing is getting blown out fast. The player who is headlining these stories, Brandon Phillips, was cut to make room for LeVar Ball's son, LiAngelo Ball, who by LeVar standards shouldn't even be playing in the JBA because supposedly he should already have been signed to an NBA team working on at his game in the offseason for that team. Like, LiAngelo didn't even get invited to play for the summer team for one of these NBA teams. Like, this is such a bad look 
for the big baller brand LeVar Ball, I don't see how this is going to end well. I think me along with a lot of other people knew that when this whole leak started, it was simply a ploy to advertise his two sons. Let me ask you guys a question. If his two sons aren't playing in the JBA, do you think he really cares about the JBA? I'm willing to bet that he doesn't because we have these reports of these players who played and signed contracts to get paid that are not getting paid. And while I absolutely love the whole premise of this idea is to give different players who might not want to take the traditional college route that still would like to pursue a career in basketball while making money and doing it at the same time, that concept in and of itself is a great idea. However, the fact that the story like this is being brought out to light and the fact that it most likely will be true is not a good look. Varball is heralded as a businessman. Obviously, he talks a lot of crap. Some of the stuff he says is legitimate, but for the most part, he talks a lot of crap. He is supposed to be this pillar, this businessman who can do a lot of things that he wants because he is the boss. The problem with him is that the same mouth of his that has accumulated all of his wins is the same mouth that will also accumulate all of his losses. Besides the fact that when you look at these JBA games, they don't really look that impressive, especially not compared to college basketball. His two sons are both playing on the same team. Like if you really wanted that JBA league to seem more competitive, to seem more realistic, you will have them on separate teams teams. If your sons are as good as you say they are, they should be able to win and play each other in the final round against each other because they should be able to lead their teams. Now I'll give LeVar credit where credit is due. He basically built this entire empire off the back of one of his sons getting into the NBA. Because without Lonzo being in the NBA, nobody would know who they are. And trust me, I understand that there's more to it than that. I understand that if he only had the one son Lonzo and he didn't have any other sons, that this still wouldn't be the kind of business that it is now. The whole concept of what made them very interesting is that they had Lonzo Ball that was a very popular college player based on his style that made it into the league as a second overall draft pick who also has two younger brothers who seem to be really good basketball players as well the youngest of the two who had scored 92 points in a basketball game one time is the second brother out of the three that seems the most likely to be able to enter into the NBA. Clearly we can see that Leangelo is not going to make it to the NBA and the day he can realize that I think is going to be one of the best days of his life because that way he can finally advance beyond this career of trying to get into the NBA when it's not going to work. And when I say him, I'm really talking about his father. <laughs> like, I feel bad for Leangelo. I don't feel bad that he made that dumb decision to go ahead and steal watches or whatever in China. That was definitely on him. But I think if he would have stayed at UCLA for like the four years he probably would have been there for, he would have had a decent shot of going into the league after that. LeVar taking him out of UCLA, I think really screwed his career. For all the things that LeVar has probably done right with Lonzo, he probably did a number of fundamentally things wrong that probably stunted the potential career of both Leangelo and LaMelo Ball like permanently. I wish those two the best of luck. I don't expect LeVar Ball to change, which is fine. He is who he is. But I just hope that LaMelo's basketball career isn't negatively affected by the things LeVar Ball does. Because it's clear that whatever he did for Lonzo worked. And it's also clear that whatever he did for Leangelo and possible LaMelo is not working. Guys, let me know if you agree or disagree down in the comment section below. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Bounce past that bell to get post notifications. Don't forget to check out kickstart.com for all your sneaker essential needs. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Yay!